This is the first of two videos for people with little or no experience opening beehives. In this video, we will review the protective gear and tools you will need to open a hive. Also, we will show you how a typical hive is set up. A beekeeper needs two types of equipment, protective gear and beekeeping tools. While there are many types of protective gear available, we recommend that beekeepers with little experience invest in full body bee suits with zip-on veils that pull over the head. When purchasing these suits, be sure that the suit you buy includes a veil that sits well away from your face. These suits are available in full and jacket forms and are made of material that is light colored, lightweight, smooth, and breathable. When buying a bee suit, there is some advantage to making sure that the sleeve and pant ends are elasticized or have Velcro straps that seal the suit snugly around the wrist and ankle. This will prevent bees from flying up into your suit. Some veils that are not self-supporting may need a hat or a beekeeper's helmet to keep the veil away from your face. If it is hot when you are conducting hive inspections, it may also be advisable to wear a sweatband under the veil to keep perspiration from dripping into your eyes. Never wear tight-fitting clothing, dark clothing, or clothing made of a furry or rough textured material such as flannel or wool. These types of clothes will likely increase the number of stings a beekeeper receives. Khaki or neutral colored pants that are loose fitting are recommended. Beekeeping is hard work and bees don't like body odor. So keeping the smell of bee clothing neutral can reduce the number of stings a beekeeper receives. Honeybees may sting your suit and leave behind an alarm pheromone or smell that will agitate other colonies in the future. So bee suits should be washed regularly using unscented laundry detergent. Bee suits and other bee clothing should be washed separately from other household laundry to avoid propolis staining other clothing. For inexperienced beekeepers, gloves often allow you to relax and focus on what you are doing rather than worrying about agitating the bees or being stung. Gloves are not an essential part of a beekeeper's protective gear. They can result in bees becoming more agitated. This is because wearing gloves can lead to inadvertently crushing bees while manipulating the colony. The smell of crushed bees causes other bees in the colony to get excited. Becoming comfortable with not wearing gloves will come with time and experience in the hive. It is critical that if you are working in a state known or suspected to have Africanized bees that you wear gloves and any other additional protective gear. Smoke is a beekeeper's most important tool. Judicious use of smoke keeps colonies calm. It does this in two ways. First, it encourages bees, importantly guard bees, to leave their posts and feed on honey until they are engorged. Bees with a full honey crop are not as likely to sting. Secondly, smoke masks smells, such as the alarm pheromone left when a bee stings or when a bee gets crushed. To light a smoker, first start a small fire at the bottom of the smoker's fire pan by lighting a crumpled piece of dry newspaper or a small amount of your smoker fuel and pushing it to the bottom of the smoker pan with a hive tool. Smoker fuel can include pine needles, burlap, hemp rope, or wood pellets. Slowly add a small amount of more fuel to the fire pan while pumping the smoker bellows to produce a strong hot flame. Once satisfied that the fuel is burning, finish filling the smoker with fuel and continue to pump the bellows until you see a cloud of soft, cool smoke. Once the smoke is well established, Add a layer of green vegetation such as grass or leaves on top of the burning fuel. The green vegetation will prevent hot red ash from leaving the smoker and also help cool the smoke. When the smoker spout is secured atop the fire pan, continue to pump the smoker bellows and test the temperature of the smoke by blowing some onto your exposed skin. The smoke should be cool to the touch and should not contain any hot ashes. 
You will use a hive tool to open up the colony and remove frames. A good hive tool is made of steel. We recommend buying one that is brightly colored or spray painting it a bright color so that it will be easier to find if it is accidentally dropped in the grass between inspections. A used hive tool quickly becomes covered with wax and propolis, substances that potentially harbor bee diseases. So hive tools should always be cleaned before inspecting a new apiary. Scraping hive tools free of wax and propolis and scrubbing them with a chlorinated cleanser should become routine. As you face the honeybee colony and start from the top, you will see a top cover. Beekeepers keep their hives dry and protected from the elements with a waterproof telescoping cover or a migratory cover. This cover often has a brick or rock placed on it to keep the top from blowing off in high winds. Beneath the top cover, there's usually an inner cover made of wood that seals the upper box. This inner cover can be difficult to pry off because the bees use propolis and wax to seal it to the top. From the inner cover and down will be a series of boxes. These boxes all have standardized dimensions to hold frames of honey or brood. Brood is the term used to refer to immature bees and includes eggs, larvae, and pupae. The top hive box may contain honey or brood which can't be determined until the inner cover is removed. If the boxes contain honey, they are called honey supers. Honey supers are only put on by the beekeeper if there is an expected or ongoing nectar flow. To keep the queen from laying eggs where the bees are storing excess honey, a beekeeper usually places a queen excluder between the topmost brood box and the first honey super. A queen excluder is a thin wire or plastic board that has slots to let worker bees pass through, but are too small for a queen to pass. The brood boxes can be found under the honey supers and can be the same size or larger in depth than the honey supers. There are usually only two or three brood boxes per colony. Beneath the lowest brood box is the bottom board. This bottom board supports all the hive boxes above it and has one opening to the outside. This opening is the entrance into the hive and this is where the guard bees station themselves to keep out intruders and where all bees leave for foraging and return. This is the conclusion of our instructional video that describes beekeeping equipment. Our next video will address opening a hive and inspecting the colony.